Clifford Roundtree and his two buddies from the Lost Platoon were clearly bearing the emotional scars of battle back in 1982. So how are they today? John Blackstone picks up their story. 50 years to the day after most of his platoon was killed in a Vietnam jungle, Clifford Roundtree has found serenity on a Northern California river. That looks like a good one, man. Teaching another Vietnam vet how to fly fish. Yeah, you're right on the edge of some moss right there. That's a nice spot. Yeah. A lot of us have been in combat. Right it is healthy for us to hang out together. Uh, you know, it's good to be here in this environment with another veteran. Roundtree prefers not to dwell on the battle that left shrapnel in his arm, that he survived by playing dead. We laid there all night and played The fighting he'd willingly forget. The 22 men who died, he never will. I think so. I don't think there's too many days that go by <clears throat> that I don't think about them. Um, and their families and the loss <clears throat> and the hurt that they have to suffer. In Texas, another survivor of the battle, Kenny Barker, has a wall full of memories. When you're thinking about it like today, it brings you back to the reality of the time. That time, 50 years ago, is never far from his thoughts. There are very few days that go by that a sound or a smell or, or a sight, something will throw you back into that. My whole platoon, all 30 of us, are down under that smoke. You can see in the ambush, machines, Victor Renza took a bullet in the back. You're lying there, you taste blood in your mouth. Yes. Um, I thought for sure I was going to die. 50 years later, to the day, he carried a wreath to the Vietnam Memorial. This list is the guys that were killed in my platoon that day. That's right? a lot of guys. They take up a whole section of the wall. There it is. Back in 1982, it was Renza who organized the survivors' reunion at the wall. But he's returned many times since. I feel a calmness about going there. And I see my friends' names, and I, I'm OK with it. I know that I got to deal with it. I moved on with my life. Coming home is hard. Clifford Roundtree now admits that back in 1982, he was struggling to stay sober, a battle he's been winning for more than 30 years. It took some changes in my life to be able to look at it in a way where I could accept it and not be at war with it, uh, let go of some of the anger about it. Why me? For Kenny Barker, it's not so much survivor's guilt as survivor's obligation. Be the best you can be every day because you can't let 22 people down. For 50 years, the lives of the survivors have largely been defined by that one day, May 18th, 1967. I have a daughter who in, got married five years ago and insisted that her wedding would be on May 18th. Mm. Wow. This is hard to talk about. <laughs> so. I tried to talk her out of it, and she said, no, I want that to be a happy day for you. So that wedding day, May 18th, you walked your daughter? I walked her down, and the guys who fought side by side with me that day were sitting in the, at the reception and at the church. And on May 18th this year, the 50th anniversary of the battle, she joined her father at the Vietnam Memorial. This is Victoria, better known as Tori. Glad to meet you. Uh, no crying. No <laughs> crying. Not allowed. This is so good to have be here at this wall and honor these guys. Thank you for your service.